what is valuable to me shooting and making a film, making, lighting it and photographing it, is to be as close to reality as possible, but not entirely so. Because then there is no interest in filmmaking for me. Uh, what I like is to recreate a certain reality, if I may say so, detached from reality. Mm -hmm. This is why may, maybe you uh, believe or feel that <coughs> the actors are detached from a certain reality. It's true, but it's not uh, mm, an intellectual idea I have. Well, a bit, yes, of course. It has to be intellectual. I have to think about it. Uh, but I think it's, it's almost, uh, I would say, a natural thing for me. It, it comes, it flows out naturally for me to, to read uh, several times and to understand a script and try to already imagine what it should be looking like uh, later on. Then, of course, it's a question of means, of uh, budget, of uh, production. <coughs> so I try to be as wealthy as I can in my means, in, in whether it's camera or, or lighting uh, fixtures and things as I can to, to achieve that, that th the look that this f particular film uh, needs. Mm -hmm. We directors of photography are not alone. We depend on a script, a director, and an art director. I'm going photographing something that exists. I'm not shooting in the middle of the space in complete uh, vacuum. So I need uh, a set and a set decoration that fills the need for my photography and for the film, of course. So it, it is of really utmost importance to, um, to hold these three elements with, with you. And some British photographer said, I can't remember his name, Geoffrey Adsworth, I think. Is this, he said something very simple. He said, photography is very simple to obtain, to pr produce a beautiful photography, you must photograph beautiful things. It cannot be more simple than that. And this is true. And you can't shoot properly a horrendous script, a horrendous um, set decoration, and produce a beautiful film. This is not possible. I mean, at least for me, it isn't. I react, I would say, almost um, instinctively, with no preconceptions of any kind, to what I have in front of me, a script, a director, an art director. I believe that uh, the real temple of filmmaking is a studio. Mm -hmm. I'm not very fond of shooting. I can do it, of course on location, but um, this is where the fantasy can be made. But when I say fantasy, it's not fantastic. It's say this little off the beam, off the pretty crude uh, situation of a normal life. I'm not interested in normal life. You have to documentaries for that. Mm -hmm. Look. Um, Picasso said once that all art is a lie. From the very moment you put a camera, film, a director, a DP, and actors, you're telling a lie. Not a lie because, like, in, uh, missing because you're expressing something that really happened, but everything is false. So if we must be false, let's go all the way, but in a good way, in a positive way. I have this theory um, by which if I have a scheme to light a set and I have the means to do it in advance, pre-lighted, which is the only way to do it, it's very difficult to improvise. I can, but it has they have to be small sets, otherwise you lose, you waste too much time. So. I try to mm, design a lighting for a particular set 
in such a way that wherever the actors or actresses move, they should be well lit for that occasion. I have this feeling, this theory of mine, by which I mean, I now repeat, if you design a lighting for a set, it should work in most ways. Mm -hmm. Of course, with certain uh, differences, sometimes you have to add a light or take out a light or whatever. But you should be able to, for example, with Raul Ruiz, it's very important for him uh, to be able to turn around, mm -hmm. if possible, 360 degrees. Mm -hmm. Now, it's very difficult to, sh to, sh to, sh to light for such an enormous, well, a complete circle. Just to mention, Raoul Roos is the director of uh, Klimt, for example, and uh, Le Temps Retrouvé, the Marcel Proust story. For example, in, in uh, Le Temps Retrouvé, <coughs> Fortune, uh, unfortunately you won't say it tonight, but it's a film that has many, many special effects, mm -hmm. and not one single frame was done in post-production. Nothing at all. All in camera. That's it. Mm -hmm. With special lenses, with... Uh, the same things that Melies used a uh, hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. My influences were, or my, let's say, my, um, uh, the basic things on which I thought <coughs> or hoped to produce myself were coming actually from the Soviet cinema and the Italian neorealism, mm -hmm. and also the special realism of the British cinema. Uh, the French Nouvelle Vague, we admired, but uh, it didn't very much influence me, actually. But nevertheless, you went to France in 1970. <coughs> I went to France. Why France, then? Oh, it's a long story. Um, I admired the, uh, the French cinema. <coughs> Excuse me. But I went to France to make a film. I didn't go to France because I chose it. I chose it afterwards. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and I'm, I'm glad of my choice. But um, I had to make a film. And it, parallel to that, when I left uh, Brazil, there was a, a coup d'etat within mm. the already dictatorship, military dictatorship. So I didn't want to go back to that. And mm. then later on, I could also neither go back to Argentina because it became also an impossible situation. Mm. So I stayed in France. It was a terrible situation. I mean, the, the plot mm. of the film. And one thing that I uh, was impressed by was uh, Romy Schneider's performance. Mm. And I said to her, I can't lie to you as you would light a star, because it's not the situation to do that. It would look horrible and completely out of context. And she said, go ahead, please, go ahead. And uh, I really mm. murdered her with light. Mm. But it was the right thing to do. Not, not throughout the film, sometimes not. Uh, but it's actually, it's an exquisite, I would say, <laughs> combination of her work her acting with my lighting, they blend it together somehow. Mm -hmm. It's a miracle. It doesn't happen all the time. <laughs>